Even those Europeans who block our food, I can produce food for them much better than what they are eating now. There's a time when I went to New York and I tried to eat something, I tried to eat what they were calling pineapple. When I put it in the mouth, terrible, terrible. What's this? I could smell urea in the, in the, am I eating urea or what? In the mouth. Yet here, you see the bananas, they are rot the, the, the pineapples, you, you, you drive. They are rotting on the roadside here. So is this Christianity for me to eat good pineapples? And people in the world are eating pineapples, which are not so good. So with this, Uganda can feed many people in the world. It's very easy for us to grow food. We are here on a, a high plateau on the African continent. We get rain two times in a year. The sun is always going up and north over us. Being here on the equator, when the sun is going south, it passes over us and we get rain. When the sun is going north, it passes over us and we get rain. So you people, where you are sitting here is unique. United Nations, Amawanga Magati, now you have got to a real center of, the, of, of those nations, it's here. I was trying to look on the map of the world and see whether there could be other countries which could be like Uganda. I was only able to see possibly two, two others. One is a part of Kenya, near Mount Kenya. That area called, uh, what, what do they call that place? Near Mount Kenya, there is a uh, of the, huh? They have got an airport there. Li, li, huh? Meru is one of them, but the, where the airport is? Kuna Mukenya hapa? Kuna Mukenya? Oh. There is an Air Force base there, near Mount Kenya. That place is like Uganda, that, that place. Because that's where the equator passes, and it is also high. Because Uganda has two advantages. First of all, we are right on the equator, and then we have a high altitude. It's not easy to get those combinations. The, the only other place which could be like Uganda on the map, I've never been there, there's a place called Ecuador in South America. I suspect it could be like Uganda. Right on the equator we are with a high altitude. That's a, a combination that is not, because when you go, when you go from Uganda, you go to the Congo. Much of the Congo is on the equator, but lowland, lowland, very humid, very hot. The Amazon in South America, on the equator, lowland, but very humid, because it is lowland. Then from there, the equator goes in the ocean, no land, except it gets to the Philippines. And the Philippines is also very, very hot because it is lowland. Low, low so really, in food production, United Nations, you tell your headquarters that the center for food production is here. So work with these Ugandans 
and we deal with these bottlenecks, and we can produce, I can tell you, we can produce food which would feed very many people. I'll give you an example. These bananas you are talking about, these farmers of ours here have been uh, harvesting 5.3 metric tons per hectare of bananas per year. But in the government research center in uh, Bushen, they are now producing 53 metric tons per hectare, from five tons to 53 tons. You can imagine, more than 10 times. And somebody told me that in Brazil, they have gone up to 80 tons per hectare. So you can imagine the potential. This production we are talking about, we can multiply by 10 times if we do things right. Number five, the issue of markets. Because here in Uganda, it's very easy for us to produce food. But the problem we get are people to buy. We produce, like the other time we produce a lot of maize, we produce five million tons, but the Ugandans were eating only one million tons. So we had a surplus of four million tons. And people went into debts, into what? And I think, I think some of them have fallen out. They are no longer interested in maize because there was no market. So, persuading the people in Africa to understand the issue of one African market without borders is very, very important. So that I see our people here buying a banana known as gonja from Congo. Gonja. Gonja is a certain type of banana. But I've seen many of my mobilizers going to buy gonja from Congo. The other bananas are here, the other types, but there is this one which is from Congo. So if we do not interfere with the, with the people, the people can build an African market because they know what is where and what is. So ideologically, strategically, Let's understand and tell everybody that, please, even those Europeans who block our food, I can produce food for them much better than what they are eating now. There was a time when I went to New York and I tried to eat something, I tried to eat what they were calling pineapple. When I put it in the mouth, Terrible, terrible. What's this? I could smell urea in the, in the... Am I eating urea or what? In the mouth. Yet here, you see the bananas. They are rotting, the, the, the pineapples. You, you, you drive. They are rotting on the roadside here. So in this Christianity, for me to eat good pineapples, and people in the world are eating pineapples, which are not so good. So, you, you the young people, you talk, talk, to, please, let's have free market of food so that the one who is producing food easily, we buy it. And we exchange. This is my information to the Ugandans, which I think you can also capture, and you inform the rest of the world uh, who, who, if they want, can work with us 
to maximize the food production capacity in Uganda so that we, we, we sort of the problem of, of the human race together. I was watching people in different parts of the world rioting for food. This was the last year or two years ago. People were rioting for food. Here we were throwing food away. This is not uh, logical. I thank you and I wish you good luck.